Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a Eastwood bead roller forming die set I got recently. It's item 20267. So this is designed for like import type rollers with 22 millimeter shafts. So uh, I guess we'll open the box. I've had it open already. Basically it comes with uh, 10 grub screws. They go into the dies. This die over here which we'll look at has two grub screws in it. It's got a uh, little display to tell you which type of die is living in each little pocket in here. And it comes with instructions. I put it in a, a plastic bag because uh, there's oil on all of the dies and I didn't want to uh, damage the piece of paper. So I'll put a link to this in the uh, YouTube video. I think it's available directly from Eastwood online. So when you get these sets you're going to get the 10 grub screws or in a tiny little ziploc bag and then all of the uh, dies are wrapped in little pieces of plastic so just to make life a little bit easier i just uh, put them back in without the plastic and i'll just protect the uh, paper and whatnot so the oil doesn't get up onto the uh, cover eventually i'm sure it'll get messed up but so be it so i guess we'll start with uh, a and work our way through so this is a polyurethane lower wheel. There is no option for uh, any physical attachment to it. Take a look at the machine that I've got. We'll talk about why I got this set later on in the video. So it seems like it's just a, a snug fit onto here. It's a lower die, but you can pound it on. So it's uh, it's pretty tight. And uh, using the fastener with the length, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's uh, the fasteners that you come get with the kit are not going to be long enough if you did want to bolt that on. So that's something to consider. So kind of a, a metric screw. So put that back. Then B, they call it 180 lower die. I haven't really looked at uh, what the purpose of these are as of yet. But obviously you can put this on the uh, unit either way and it's got a groove in it. Let's try to match it up with my other dies and see what groove it is. Say somewhere between a quarter and three eighths. Maybe make it uh, 11 millimeters. So this is a inside offset die. So the grub screws are nice and tight. They're not going to fall out. You need to use an Allen head key to uh, put them on. They're nicely machined. Let's see if you can see the step. You can see that on the uh, paper anyway. If anything. So an ins outside offset die, which is this one. So you could do these in a million different combinations. But as you can see, they nest together. And they have the uh, tipping die edge. And the lower forming die. So these kind of go together. So lower forming die is actually like a very sharp edge. I'm not sure what the angle is. You can put that in there. So I call this a 3 8 tipping die. So let's see if it matches this other one. 180 lower die. It does. So it's just got a little bit different clearances than the original set. One thing I didn't like about the original set is uh, with their radius die, it just, uh, it's a bump on the outside of the shaft. So you can't put it all the way into the pocket. So this uh, is better in my opinion. They have a half inch tipping die. I don't know they call it a tipping die. I guess you could do it on an edge. 
and the round tipping die. I'm not sure what the radius is on that. We'll probably figure that out later if it's not in the documentation. Then the lower forming die. And if you've watched any of the last videos, you can have infinite combinations of dies to make just about anything you want. So that's a really positive thing. So now I'll just move the camera over and show you the test piece that I made when I got my bead roller motor working. So just using all of the original dies that came with this uh, bead roller. So I marked them all out for myself just so I can remember. It's a half inch bead roll, three eighths bead roll, quarter. Then there's the offset dies. So you can see I did kind of back and forth. And there's a limit to how uh, deep you can go with the uh, offset dies. So if you go too far, you're just going to start cutting the metal. And I think in the last piece I was trying to cut it with the cutting die. Yeah, the shear. In the last piece. But I didn't have much luck with the shear. It kind of walks around on the shafts. Maybe I'll get it figured out. Maybe not. I don't know if there's a, a big use for it. Since then I put some fluid film on all of my dies there to keep them from rusting. The garage is kind of humid here. There's a bit of a roof leak. So uh, I'll take a look at the contours I need to make now. So for my inner door bottoms I need to make this contour for the uh, front door on the bottom and then on the rear door I need to make this contour. So then like the inner door skin will continue up here and then this will end with a flange for the door skin to attach to. I'll give you an idea how this works. So I kind of just use my sander to make a template to do this. So I looked at the dies that I had with the kit originally. I felt that I was kind of limited to the shapes I could do. I probably couldn't pull that off, so that's why I ordered the uh, Eastwood forming die kit. So I'll shut off the camera here, get a piece of scrap metal out. We'll kind of play around with it and see how it works. All right, so I got a couple dies set up on the machine. They're uh, not a snug fit but they're not loose either. They jiggle around a little bit. So I checked the uh, depth of the hole here. It's uh, 22.01 and uh, I didn't zero out my machine. So now that it's zeroed out again yeah, it's about the same. Anyway, it's a little bit awkward to do through the camera. But it's, uh, it's 22.01 on the inside diameter. So just get a piece of metal over here. So I got the uh, set up for a joggle right now. Put the pedal on the floor. So the hard part is always figuring out how much it'll take in the bite. That's pretty much no pressure. I will say that uh, when I set up the machine, I set up my collars and also the overall how much of the shaft sticks out. So that's important that the, the collars and whatnot are on the right position so when you put the dies on, they mate correctly. I have to twist up a little bit. Sure to see the joggle starting to form. Whether I can recreate that again. That's probably the thickness of a piece of sheet metal now. If you want to do a, an overlapping panel situation.
So I think we all know how joggles work. So I was looking at uh, the pieces of contoured metal I need to set up for my lower door skins or insides and it's not that easy to figure out how I'm going to do that. So it'll probably take me more than a few hours of experimenting before I'm happy with the way to get the profile I want. But it, it looks like between the 3 8 beads and the half inch beads I can get pretty much what I want. Plus I'll use a joggle for one of my smaller offsets and uh, I think I'll be able to figure it out. But like I said, it's going to take a while. So uh, I'm not sure when the next video is going to be. But overall the uh, quality of these pieces is excellent. I think they give the uh, hardness of the steel as well as uh, the hardness of the polyurethane on their website if you wanted to recreate these. And uh, it's convenient the way it is, you get the, a full set, but if you need to keep adding to it, it might be at some point worthwhile to get a little lathe. They can do uh, bar stock of this about size. So anyway, thanks for watching. Alright, let's try another uh, little addition to this video before we wrap it up. So I've got a half inch uh, tipping die plus a lower forming die. When you look in a little instruction booklet, this is an undocumented combination. So uh, we'll see what happens. Hardest part is always kind of getting the uh, machine to bite on the piece of metal. I think we will put it through like this. Especially with it being kind of round. I don't want to get my fingers run through there. So we'll do a pretty modest first pass. And then report there. Something's starting to take place. It's not as easy to follow a line with the uh, round top die. See that for sure. Yeah, it seems to help if you tip the metal at the beginning and then twist it back up uh, as you get going. If you can see the uh, contour or not. Go through it a few more times. like to get a bit of pressure on it. Nothing too spectacular happening. So I'll let you take a peek at that profile, see if you're interested in that or not. It's kind of hard to twist the camera or the piece to the camera correctly. So I guess I'll wrap up the video now. And uh, when I get uh, something looking good for the car there, I'll show you some, take a look at how I did it. Okay, I guess we'll end the video when uh, we end it. I'm not too sure when that's going to be. So it turns out that my first attempt was actually pretty a good shot. So uh, using the combination that I showed you, I got the first bit of the profile. So I made a mark on the back saying that the uh, I used a half inch uh, tipping die on the upper and then the bottom I used the uh, lower forming die. So that worked out pretty cool. And then I thought, well I better do that again and I'll get the next uh, step. I need a bit deeper of a step up to figure that out. Start putting it in. I'm like, huh, the rollers are too close together. This is not going to fit. So clearly the flat edge needs to go through 
the bead roller. Unless you have a, a very wide spacing on the uh, shafts on your machine, which is available. So that's something you have to think about when you're uh, making your piece. You'll definitely want the, uh, the width of the uh, piece to continue to build on the outside. So you'll have to consider that as you're picking away at it. Alright, so practice continues. I put on the uh, polyurethane lower wheel and I was able to get uh, a nice 90 degree bend into the piece. If it comes into the frame soon. I found that if you put too much pressure on the wheel you'll get a bulge and kind of like a channel at this location so you try to avoid doing that unless that is the uh, detail that you're looking for. So this piece is a bit contorted and whatnot because uh, as I was feeding it in I was kind of putting a twist into it. So that's uh, the result. If I was coming on square to the panel I wouldn't need to do that. So if you have like an angled panel and you need to come onto it you might want to add uh, some extra then cut it off later rather than trying to enter a panel say that's cut on a 45 degree angle. So for a first shot I think that's pretty good. You, obviously you couldn't paint this and be happy with it but hey we're getting there. I did find that when you were putting pressure on, like yeah, I put it through like such. You're trying to bend it up, just so running your fingers through it. But when you're doing that, the uh, polyurethane wheel walks off of the uh, lower shaft, so I do need to find a fastener to put into the end so it stops it from popping off like even though it's a very tight fit that pressure is putting enough of a twisting force force onto the wheel that it is sliding off so uh, you'll need to find a fastener to keep that on there so i guess that's it for tonight that's uh, the real end of the video thank you